Hey, what is going on, guys? My name is Lucky Buns, and in today's video, we're going to be finding out if we can actually beat Pokemon Sword and Shield using only Golarian Corsola, also known as Coral. Oh. Now, you're probably asking yourselves, why did I pick Golarian Corsola? Well, Galarian Corsola is a very interesting Pokemon, guys, because it is a tank. It has a really good defense stat and a really good special defense stat, but on the downside, its attack, special attack, and its speed stat are terrible. So I figured it would make an interesting challenge. I wanted to pick a Pokemon that wasn't going to make this challenge incredibly easy, so that's why I kind of went with Corsola. I felt like it had potential to do well, but it really just depended on our strategy. And as you guys are going to see in this video, there was a lot of strategy involved. And so our adventure starts off not on my Switch, but actually my sister's Switch, because uh, Galarian Corsola is a Pokemon Shield exclusive, and so I wanted to try and get some pretty good IVs on my Galarian Corsola for the playthrough, as well as the hidden ability Cursed Body, which was a very important factor to consider when planning out this run, because having that ability, guys, it gives you a 30% chance to disable your opponent's Pokemon's move. So basically, any time that your opponent attacks you, like let's say, for example, they use Bite, there is a 30% chance that Corsola is going to disable that move. So basically, the process to end up getting the hidden ability on Corsola is that we had to find the Raid Den that had Corsola, which is going to be Galarian Corsola's evolution. So we found that, and then we farmed it until we got to the Purple Beam. After that, we had to farm through every single Pokemon until we got to Cursula. And then here is where we actually needed to have a Ralts with the ability trace. And I believe Curlia and Gardevoir can also have the ability trace, so it doesn't have to be Ralts specifically. But basically what trace does is that when you enter into a battle, for example, the Raid Den battle, it'll tell you what that Pokemon's ability is. And so in this case, we were looking for the hidden ability Perish Body on Cursula. And I seriously have no idea how we got this lucky, guys, but we ended up getting Perish Body on Cursula our very first try. I believe the odds are 1 out of 11, so again, I just, I really can't believe that it happened that way, but it did. And, um, <laughs> I was pretty hyped to say the least. And so now that we got our hidden ability Cursula, the next thing that I had to do is I had to breed and try and get a good IV Galarian Cursula for our playthrough. So I transferred Cursula over to my uh, Switch, and then we started farming it down. Eventually, I got to a point where I was pretty satisfied with the IV spread. I think we went through maybe like 70 eggs before I actually got one that I liked. And so I put that aside, and then I got it ready for the playthrough. And so I wanted to make this playthrough a little bit interesting, and so I called my Galarian Corsola Coral Grimes. <laughs> for those of you who know, you know. And then, of course, to accompany that, we named our trainer Lydia, which... Again, if you know, you know. Now, we couldn't just start the playthrough immediately with Galarian Corsola, so we had to go through the story until we unlocked trading. And just to fill you in on which starter I picked, I ended up picking Sobble. This way, Hop would have Score Bunny and Leon would have Grookey. This would make our consistent fights with Hop a little bit more manageable early on. So now that we have our Corsola, a level 1 Corsola, I might add, we needed to train it. So I went back to the first wild patch near my house and I started battling. This is where Cursed Body really came in clutch. After getting wrecked by Rookidi, we successfully took down a Hoot Hoot and made it to level 4, and we continued to battle here until we hit level 8. Then we went back to the Pokemon Center, healed up, and got ready for our first trainer battle against the all-powerful Last Lauren. Now a fun fact about Galarian Corsola and specifically ghost types is that physical attacks like Tackle don't actually work on them. So we were able to beat Last Lauren pretty easily. After we completed our first trainer battle, I decided to keep on training until about level 12 before we finally headed to Wedgehurst and headed towards the wild area. Before we entered the wild area though, Sonya gave us the ability to store our Pokemon from our bag. Not that we really needed it, but hey, thanks Sonya. In my original playthrough, I spent hours in the wild area, probably about five hours here, just, you know, enjoying the magnificence of what the wild area had to entail. This time around, I probably spent five minutes. Now that we made our way into Modestoke, it was finally time to register for the gym challenge and pick our number. Those of you in chat that day ended up picking Corsola's Pokedex number as 222. Really good idea. After that, Sonya gave us a history lesson, and then we beat up some groupies. And then Hop heals us before an epic team battle. We smoke him, by the way. Then a cute goth girl shows up and apologizes for everything. Super cool, by the way. Gotta love that smile. After that, we enjoy our complimentary stay at the Badoo Inn, and the next morning, we suit up as number 222. As we watch the opening ceremony take place, we see our favorite gym leaders come into the stadium, and of course, we see Bay. But you know everyone else is cool too. Then after a small talk with Leon and Rose, aka Jeff, we unlocked flying taxis. Now for those of you guys who don't understand why I call him Jeff, well, my friend Jeff looks incredibly similar to Chairman Rose. Or should I say, Chairman Rose looks incredibly similar to Jeff. 
I'll let you make the judgment call there. So now that we've done that, we're ready to move on, we're ready to start our gym challenge journey and head over to that first gym leader, but Hop is blocking our path, and he smokes us quite a few times. Now, here is where we just ended up getting incredibly lucky, guys. Somehow, like, somehow, Hop's Rukadi just continued to use Leer. I I'm not really even sure why. I was at, like, 3 HP, and I'm just like, okay, we're gonna die any second now. But he just kept on using Leer. So we kept on using Astonish, and eventually got a critical hit, knocking it out and taking us to level 17. I still don't really know how he won. Like, it, it just... It doesn't really make that much sense, but hey, we'll take the victory, right? And so after that intense battle, we heal up Coral, and we start battling our way through Route 3. Everything was going fine until we got poisoned and died. After a quick panic back to the Pokemon Center, we healed up and got ready to swoop again. After that, we talked to a very nice girl in front of the Galar Mine, after which we proceeded to enter the very scary Galar Mine. After some battles, we hit level 20 and unlocked Rock Blast, a super good move for Coral. This allowed us to have a very spammy attack early on, and believe me guys, that really does come in handy. 2-5 to five hits, especially if you end up rolling the 5 hits. That's a big deal, it's a ton of damage. So we continued to sweep more trainers throughout the Galar mine, and eventually we ran into Beat at the very end of the tunnel. Now this would normally be an easy fight, right? Well, it would, but Corsola was sadly too high of a level for me to control at this point because it was a traded Pokemon. So it wouldn't obey us. So what should have been a very easy fight was actually an incredibly difficult and very complicated fight. But eventually we got through it, eventually we beat Bead, and we moved on. And so after clearing the Galar Mine, it was finally time to take down our very first gym leader and complete his gym challenge. So we headed on over to Milo's gym, and we herded those sheep guys, we herded those Wooloo real good. After completing the gym challenge, it was finally time to take on Milo face to face. And boy did we battle him, again, and again, and again. Combined with the fact that Corsola would not listen to me, Eldegoss just kept on smoking us. Like, it wasn't even funny, guys. We just completely got destroyed by that thing. So after a large number of beatings, I decided it was time to go train up to level 25. Took forever with uh, Coral disobeying me, but you know, it is what it is. And we did this to unlock the move Hex. Hex was a more powerful ghost-type move compared to Astonish. And so after unlocking Hex, I went back over to the gym and I kept on trying to beat him. Just time and time again, Corsola would just not obey me, guys. Like, it was really, really frustrating. But then it happened. Then it happened. We got a clean first hit using Hex, then we disabled Magical Leave. After that, the second Hex sadly didn't go through, but the third one did go through, and Rapid Spin also didn't work on us, which means that we were able to go into the Eldegoss fight in really good shape. So I decided not to Dynamax right away, but instead tank out the first Max Overgrowth, at which point then I would Dynamax and go for three hopefully successful Max Phantasms. Sadly, the first one did not go through because Corsola did not obey us, but then the second one went through, and thankfully the third one went through, and now we were almost about to beat it, guys. We were almost about to beat Milo. It was crucial that the next hit went through, and we didn't get KO'd by Eldegoss. So we got hit with Leafage, we didn't die, and then we successfully got off that final Hex, guys. You could not believe how happy I was to actually see Corsola go through with that final Hex. Like, we had been trying this for hours. Like, I kid you not, maybe like four to five hours just trying to get this to go through. And you gotta believe that everything was just going against us. The fact that Corsola would not obey us was one of the most frustrating things I think I've ever had to deal with in a Pokemon game. But we did it. We finally beat Milo and we claimed our very first gym badge. Now Corsola would also obey us again up to level 30 with this badge, so you can better believe that I did not want to make that mistake again. After that incredible challenge, it was finally time to start moving forward again. So we encountered Team Yell on our way over to Hullberry. We smoked him, by the way, because Corsola would actually obey us now. I was trying to avoid hitting level 30 as well, though, so I did try to minimize the amount of battles I did go through on our way over to Hullberry, because if I went over level 30, we would encounter the same problems in Ness's gym, and Ness's gym was going to be a lot more difficult as well compared to Milo's gym. And after saving this man from Team Yell, he was nice enough to give us a Rotom bike. What a great guy. And then we ran into Hop again. Yep. Again. But thanks to Rock Blast, we smoked him! As we made our way into Hullberry, we ended up seeing Jeff in disguise, and then he proceeded to slap Bead with a sick burn! Then we found Ness at the lighthouse, looking, you know, pretty cute, but it was time for our second gym challenge, guys. It was time for the waterfall puzzles, plus some trainer battles. And so after clearing Ness's gym challenge, it was finally time to take on Nessa herself. 
This was gonna be really difficult though, guys. Her Dredna, oh my goodness. Max Darkness, holy cow. It just murdered us time and time again. Every single time we got to her Dredna, Max Darkness just phew, completely destroyed us. And once again, guys, Galarian Corsola is only weak to two types, Dark and Ghost. Now, of course, I wasn't going to give up there, so I continued to battle Nessa for about another hour or two before realizing this was hopeless and I needed to go get leftovers. Now, I didn't put any hard restrictions on this playthrough, but I wanted to also make it challenging as well, so I didn't want to allow myself to use battle items, basically items like potions that I would use in the middle of a fight, but I did allow myself to use held items. And this was kind of based on other people who had done similar challenges to this, uh, using only one Pokemon for their entire playthrough. It seemed as if more people were okay with using held items compared to battle items, so I kind of just went with the same style as well. Unfortunately though, this wasn't enough, as Nessa continued to wreck us with Max Darkness. So I went back to the drawing board, tried to think of some different strategies I could be using against this fight. This one really got me stumped, guys. Like, I honestly thought we weren't going to get past Nessa. And so after a bunch of planning and tons of strategy, we were ready to head back over to Nessa's gym and hopefully get this gym badge. So combined with some good RNG, we were able to avoid getting confused from Goldeen's water pulls. That was like really big, guys, because that confusion did a ton of damage in the long run if it actually went through. Then after that, we were able to have Cursed Body disable Arrokuda's uh, bite, so we were able to avoid getting hit with like really, really harsh attacks, because again, guys, Corsola is only weak to dark and ghost type attacks. Bite, especially at an early level like level 30, was going to do a ton of damage. And so everything was going pretty smoothly. We were able to go into the Dreadnought fight at 65 HP, guys. Very, very good HP to go into that fight. But here is where we had to really strategize. And so it came down to using the Max Guards. And so the way that Max Guard works in Pokemon Sword and Shield is that you have a significantly lower chance of success when you use back to back. This meant that if I used three Max Shields against Dreadnought, it wasn't going to work very well because by the time I got to the second one, assuming that one actually worked, the third one for sure would definitely not work. Or I'd just be playing the RNG game all day basically until it went through. So instead of doing back-to-back -back max shields, what I decided to do is I decided to use a max guard the first time, then go for a max phantasm, tank out the hit, and then use a max guard again. This allowed us to survive and go back to the standard fight against Dredna. Again guys, max darkness was pretty much just like destroying us, and going into that fight at 65 HP, then Dynamaxing and increasing my HP was really, really big. So now that we were able to get back to the standard fight against Dreadnought, we had to deal with Bite, which again, was kind of RNG based because we could flinch. It has a very, very high chance to flinch. And so we were able to get off a Hex and we healed a bit from the leftovers, but we were almost dead at this point. And then a miracle happened, guys. Cursed Body kicked in and disabled Bite. And then we got off our Hex and we KO'd that stupid Dreadnought. Like, oh my god, I hate that thing so much. Like, Nessa, you gave me such a hard time. All things being said though, had the Hex not actually killed Dredna, I'd like to believe that we could have actually survived one additional hit from Dredna. But again, you know, don't really need to even worry about it because we KO Dredna right then and there. Oh my goodness, guys. More challenging than the first, we finally beat Nessa after some good strategy and some good RNG, and we claimed our second gym badge. Nessa also gave us a TM Whirlpool, which was going to be incredibly useful for our playthrough, guys. And it functions very similar to Rock Blast, where it basically hits the opponent every single turn. Which again, very spammy, very effective. As we continued along with our Pokemon journey, it was finally time to have our rematch with Bead, which was much easier this time considering that Korra would actually obey us. We sweeped him, like, no competition whatsoever. As we made our way to the end of the cave, we ended up running into Team Yell again. At this point, we decided to have a tag team battle with Hop. Although for some reason, Team Yell just decided to target me the entire time, so Corsola eventually went down, but we didn't lose the match. Tag team battle rules, guys. Um, Hop did us a solid and basically took out the trash, and then healed Corsola back up to full, so yeah. Definitely owe him for that. Now that we finally cleared the cave, it was time to head on over to Motostoke and fight Kabu but not before a good night's rest at the Badoo Inn. Oh, just kidding. And once again, we ended up getting kind of lucky because Cursed Body disabled Bite on more Pika, which allowed us to pull off the victory with less than 10 HP. Incredible. So after that intense battle, we got a good night's rest and woke up ready to go for our third gym challenge. So for this challenge, it was fairly simple. We pretty much just had to be the first to get up to five kills and we competed against another challenger who could also damage our Pokemon as well. 
let's just say things got a bit savage. Eventually, we were able to get all five kills fairly easily and complete the challenge. We healed up, and then we got ready for the real fight. I assumed it would be easier, but I was sadly mistaken. So our first problem with the Kabu fight was going to be his Nine Tails, because it ended up using Will-O-Wisp right away, which burned us. Second, his Arcanine had Bite, so in the process, we hit level 35 after failing quite a few times, and we eventually unlocked Strength Sap. This was going to be the most important move, guys, for the entirety of the run, like I'm not even kidding you. Strength Sap is like one of the most OP moves in the entire Pokemon franchise, it's just, it, it's incredible. This move basically heals you based on your opponent's attack stat, and it also lowers their attack stat as well by one stage. So, depending on our opponent's attack stat, we were going to heal up a ton of HP. And of course, as we continued to use the move, their attack stat was going to get lower as well, meaning that we wouldn't heal as much. And so similar to the fight with Nessa, we went with the same strategy. So we decided to max guard against the first hit, launch a max rock fall against it, tanking out whatever hit they dished out at us, which we were thankfully able to survive, then we max guarded against the second hit. And as soon as we went back to normal, I knew that Senti Scorch had a really, really high attack stat, so we're able to use Strength Sap and heal all the way back to full. Now at this point, it was pretty much just using a combination of Whirlpool and Strength Sap to stay alive, and so we were thankfully able to safely take it down. So all in all, Kabu wasn't really a difficult fight, but I have to say without Strength Sap, I don't think that we would have been able to survive and definitely move forward with this challenge. This was definitely a pinnacle milestone for this playthrough, guys, because getting to this point after the third gym leader was not an easy feat to do. Milo gave us a really tough time, and Nessa gave us a really tough time, and even Kabu gave us a pretty difficult time. But I'd have to say he was probably the easier of the three. Now we move on over to stage two. It was time to navigate through the wild area and head on over to Hammerlock. As we enter into Hammerlock, we run into Jeff once again in disguise, who tells us about his power plant. And after all the chatting was done, we had to do something very, very important, guys. After that, Sonya gave us another history lesson on the darkest day, after which we proceeded to head on over to Stow on the side, which has the most amazing person in this entire game. After we cross the bridge, we run into Team Yell once again, at which point we get poisoned in the middle of a fight against super annoying, but with the help of Strength Sap, we're able to pull off the victory. Those dark type Pokemon, man, they are not fun. But wait, how about a back to back fight? That should make it a little bit more challenging and then we proceeded to get wrecked by Lyperd. This meant that I actually had to create some sort of strategy for this fight, so I basically just trapped Lyperd and spammed it with Rock Blast. That seemed to do the trick. After me and Hop's school team yell, I noticed something very interesting though. Hop was starting to show signs of depression. We don't have time to worry about that though, we have a Pokemon journey to focus on. So after clearing Route 6, we make it to Stow on the side, we heal up, and we get ready to battle Bay, The lovely Bay. Just kidding, Hop wants to fight again. This probably won't help his depression either. So, this time he started off with a Cramorant, uh, we made short work of it with Rock Blast, and proceeded to sweep him. I just want to mention right now, guys, I do give Hop props as a rival for actually switching up his team and not going with the same Pokemon over and over again. Um, it was definitely a little bit more interesting to battle him this time around. And the good thing is, he doesn't seem depressed anymore, so yeah. Good job, Hop. Way to tackle that depression. Moving on over to our real focus, though, Bay's Gym Challenge. Let it rip! This was going to be a lot more challenging than I had originally anticipated, mainly because of Brutal Swing. I'm not kidding guys, Brutal Swing is our worst nightmare. Like, literally that move just... Holy cow, it hit so hard. And to be completely honest, the first trainer in Bay's Gym Challenge was the most difficult by far. The other two really weren't too bad, and I was definitely able to manage those fights, but... That first one, Brutal Swing, was really tough. And so now that we were finally done with Bay's Gym Challenge, it was finally time to face off against her ourselves. Bay's hit on top was super easy to get through, but her Pangoro had Brutal Swing. Again, we just went with the Strength Sap strategy, basically just healing up until its attack didn't do that much damage against us. Then we went for the kill. After that, we had to go up against her Surfetched. Again, using the same strat because it also had Brutal Swing. So after we were able to complete that, it was finally time for her Gigantamax Machamp. Now instead of Dynamaxing during this portion of the fight, I chose to just farm Strength Sap instead, trying to burn down Machamp's attack stat and also just survive against the Max Darkness. Once again, we had to go through Max Darkness all over again. The cool thing is that it ended up working though, like really, really well. And so after Machamp went back to normal, we Dynamaxed, hit it two times with Max Phantasm, and knocked it out. 
So this was definitely our fastest gym leader challenge so far. Uh, once again, getting access to Strength Sap was definitely a game changer. And so after getting our fourth gym badge, we start talking to Sonya and then hear a loud explosion, guys. Freaking Bead, up to no good again. So we gotta sweep him once again. We gotta put Bead in his place. And then Jeff does the unthinkable and he desponsors Bead. And then right before we're about to leave, the plot thickens once again. Welcome to history lesson number three with Professor Sonia. Going back to our main objective here of completing the gym challenge, we gotta make our way through the fairy forest. This was actually pretty easy, guys. We just knocked out a few trainers and then made our way into Bal and Leia. Now it was time for our next gym challenge, or should I say an audition? Yeah, we actually had to audition for the gym leader role. After answering a series of questions and going through a handful of battles, it was finally time to battle Opal herself. Now the cool thing about this gym battle is that you actually get stat boost if you end up answering her questions correctly. So the first question, you gotta answer wizard, then you end up getting a speed boost. Second question, purple defense plus special defense boost. Third question, 16 attack plus special attack boost. Overall, this fight wasn't too challenging, I'd have to say it was definitely among our easier ones throughout this playthrough. Again, uh, she had Galarian Weezing, Mawile Togekiss, and then finally her last Pokemon was uh, Gigantamax Alcremi, which our strategy for that fight was basically to just stay in our regular form, use Strength Sap, stay alive, and then go for the Dynamax form and knock it out basically immediately. And that's exactly what we did. We smoked Alcremi with Max Phantasm, like completely demolished it. And so after getting our fifth gym back, it was time to head on over to Sir Chester. So Opal offers to fast travel us back to Hammerlock, and then she ends up recruiting Bead to be the gym leader. Like, okay, yeah, for sure. And so everything seems to have fallen in place. Oh wait, just kidding. Oh well, well I guess it's not really our problem, right? Time to fight Hop again. And so once again, Hop is deciding to use different Pokemon. So he starts off with Trevenant, pretty easy to kill with Hex. Then he comes out with Boltind. Again, has access to Bite, kind of challenging, but then Cursed Body comes in clutch and disables it. After that, we got a face off against his Cinder Ace, uh, which again was pretty easy to beat with Rock Blast. Heatmore, again, pretty easy to take down as well, and Snorlax was a little bit challenging, but manageable. Now it was time to navigate through the maze that is Route 8. So we finally make it into Sir Chester, and we have to solve the mystery of the stolen apples. Just kidding. It's the squirrel. It's always a squirrel. Anyways though, it's time to get down to the real business. The freaking death trap that is the Sir Chester Gym Challenge. So after finally going through that mess of a gym challenge, it was time to battle Gordy. So Gordy starts off with Barbarkle, and he keeps on murdering us with Razor Shell, like not even funny guys. And next up, he has a Shuckle. You guys already know, don't with Shuckle. And so after a few attempts, I came to the realization that this just wasn't going to work out. I needed to go back to the drawing board and I needed to go back to training. But before we did that, it was time to accessorize once again because Sir Chester has the best outfit selection in the entire game. Now that we look super stylish, it was time to head on over to the wild area and get back to training. So we farmed max raids until about level 62, at which point I figured it was time for our rematch with Gordy. So I immediately went for a strength sap to lower his Barbarkle's attack stat and I even got lucky with the cursed body disabling Razor Shell and then we use Whirlpool to take out Shuckle. After that though was the tanky Stone Journer, which thankfully, Cursed Body came in clutch once again, disabled Rock Tomb, and so we just continued to use Whirlpool until it fainted. And now in order to deal with the Gigantamax Colossal, we went with the same strategy as our last gym leader fight, where we just decided not to Dynamax and instead use a combination of Whirlpool and Strength Sap to stay alive and also dish out a ton of damage. So after three turns passed, we Dynamaxed, and then murdered it with Max Geyser. Now that we got our sixth gym badge, it was time to celebrate, so Sonya invites us out for some pizza. And then we have to battle Hop, again, but we completely smoke his team. And now here is the part that I've been dreading, guys. The gym leader that, oh my goodness, we are going to struggle so much against. Here's. We gotta start heading on over to Spike Muth. Before we do that though, we gotta rescue this guy again from Team Yell. And as a thank you, he upgrades our Rotom Bike, allowing us to now travel on water. Thanks so much, man. Really do appreciate it. After making it through Route 9, we find out that Spike Muth is actually closed, but then our homegirl Marnie hooks it up with that secret entrance. If we can beat her. And again, guys, this entire just gym challenge fight is so difficult because they all use Dark-type Pokemon. So Marnie starts off using her Lipart to torment us. Literally one of the most frustrating moves to deal with. Basically, we can't use the same move twice. And so her next Pokemon was going to be Scrafty. Again, pretty tough Pokemon to beat, especially when you have Torment going through. Uh, we were able to get it done, though, using Whirlpool. It slowly took it out. After that, we had to go up against her Toxicroak, which has Sucker Punch. Again, Dark-type move. 
but thankfully Curse Body disabled it. Whirlpool also doesn't work on Toxic Rogue due to its ability, so we couldn't use that move during that battle as well. Now finally for her more Pico, we used Whirlpool and Strength Sap combo to basically try and survive the bites. It was a really tough fight, but we were able to take the win after only one failed attempt, so thankfully it didn't take us too long to win this fight. Now for this gym challenge and the next gym challenge that we're going to have to go through, it's going to require us to have two Pokemon in our party. This is for the double battles. So I transferred in another Corsola, level 1. This is similar to what people have done in their solo playthroughs as well, kind of where I got the idea. And so we were able to clear through most of the gym challenge fairly easily. I'd have to say the third battle with the Scrafty was the most difficult one, but you know, everything else was kind of whatever. That double battle definitely took a toll on us though, especially due to the poison. So we had to go back to the start, all the way back to the start, I know, so annoying heal up, and then get ready for a big fight with Piers. So Piers starts off with a Scrafty, we use Strength Sap to lower its attack, and then use Whirlpool to put it in a Vortex, and then we go for the Power Gem. His Malamari was also so frustrating, oh my gosh guys, Night Slash? So OP! After continuing to try and beat his Malamari, we just couldn't do it guys, so I decided we had to come up with a different strategy. And so what we went ahead and did is that we changed two moves. We changed Hex to Will-O-Wisp, and we changed Power Gem to Facade. The way the Facade works is that it has double power when you're burned, poisoned, or paralyzed. And I figured we were probably going to get poisoned at some point during this fight. So now we were using the combo of Burn, Whirlpool, Strength Sap, and Cursed Body. So we took down the Scrafty much easier this time, and Malamari kept on using Payback, so after a lot of back and forth, we eventually got it down. But my goodness, that thing gave me nightmares, literally. Now it's time for Piers' signature Pokemon though, his Obstagoon, which had Throat Chop. So my strategy against his Throat Chop was to start off with the Strength Sap, lower its attack stat, and then go for the Will-O-Wisp to get the burn off. This way, we would actually be getting some consistent damage despite probably having to heal consistently every single turn. So it became a lot more manageable and eventually we were able to take it down. Now his final Pokemon was Skuntank, which again, I was kind of calling the poison here and it eventually did poison us. Um, but again, we just kept on using Strength Sap to not die. The poison kept hitting us harder and harder though, and eventually we got down to 29 HP. We got hit with a Sucker Punch, put us down to 11 HP, and then we got a double knockout and won the battle. Yeah, if you both knock each other out, I guess, I guess you get the victory, but I guess in our case we also had that second Corsola, so I'm not really sure how to feel about that, but yeah, I'm gonna take that as a win. This is arguably our toughest gym leader fight as well, just due to the fact that Corsola only takes super effective damage from dark and ghost types, and this was a dark type gym. Yeah, the fact that we got through this was amazing on its own, I mean seriously, the Malamari, the Obstagoon, the Skuntank. Oh my goodness. And then right as we're leaving, this dude's like, yo, come help us out. But then Leon's like, don't worry, bro, I got this. It's true, though. He definitely did have it handled. So we meet up with Sonya and Leon after that, alongside Professor Magnolia. Jeff is up to no good, by the way. And no worries, this ain't our problem. Yet. So now it's time for another double gym battle. But I realized, we never named our other Corsola, we never named Coral's partner. So I went to the Pokemon Center, and I fixed it. Double Curse Body, Strength Sap, and Will-O-Wisp. Yeah, definitely felt pretty confident moving forward. The first fight was fine, but the second fight we had to take advantage of the Burn from the Ninetales, along with Facade, which again doubles the power if your Pokemon is burned. Then before the third fight, I decided to switch up the Will-O-Wisp with Hex. I figured now we can actually use Ghost-type moves again, so makes sense. And so after successfully completing Ryan's gym challenge, it was time to face off against him ourselves, guys. It was finally time for the ultimate tag team battle. The tag team battle that was either going to make or break this playthrough. This is usually where most people struggle with their playthroughs just due to the intensity of the fight. I mean, Ryan is a really, really good gym leader. He's not the eighth gym leader for no reason. So Ryan starts off with a Flygon, and Gigalith. The Flygon has the ability to start a Sandstream as well, which is also kind of annoying, on top of the fact that it has Crunch and Breaking Swipe, two Dark-type moves. So the first thing that we do is we launch a Whirlpool on Gigalith, and then we go for the Disable on Flygon to stop the Breaking Swipes. I was originally going for Crunch, but it went for the Breaking Swipe, so Strength Sap was barely keeping us alive, but eventually we took down the Flygon, and then Sandaconda was brought out. Now at this point, the Sandstorm was gone too after the Flygon had gone down, and so we just healed off the fresh Sandaconda and got back our HP. And then we finished off Gigalith with Michonne. And so far, things were definitely looking good, but then Ryan brought out his Gigantamax Duraludon. 
At which point, Michonne got wrecked by Gigantamax depletion. Now it's time for us to Dynamax, but our paralysis actually prevented us from attacking on the first turn. Thankfully, Max Phantasm worked on the second turn, though. At 66 HP left, we take down the Duraludon, 35 HP now, and we still have to take down the Sandaconda, who continued to use the Protect move. Really, dude? Come on. Just take the L. We kept on using Strength Sap to heal against the Sandaconda since it kept on using Protect, but eventually we were able to get off the Whirlpool and get the kill. My goodness, that was an insane fight. Like, holy cow, that was so crazy. But we did it, guys. We finally got all eight gym badges, and then we watched Sonya get coded. I mean, seriously, greatest day ever. Our journey's not over yet, though. In fact, it was just the end of stage two, as we are finally entering into the final stage of this playthrough, guys. Stage three has just begun. Before we headed on over to Windon, though, I knew that we needed to train more, so I went back to the wild area to hunt for TRs and XP candy. We were able to get Coral to level 73, at which point I figured it's probably time to head on over to Windon now. So we met up with Hop and we got on the train to Route 10. After navigating through the snowy terrain of battlers, we finally make it to Windon. It's all been leading up to this, my friends. The final challenges are slowly approaching. Now it is time for the Champion Cup. After we're all finished registering, we end up going up against Marnie again. Super difficult fight because it's primarily dark type Pokemon. So we failed a lot, we changed our moves, and we trained even more. We went from level 73 all the way to level 84 before going up against Marty once again. And after going through and changing up my moves a few times, I ended up deciding on Whirlpool, Liquidation, Strength Sap, and Bulldoze. I figured this would just be the best optimal moveset that we could go in with. So upon entering the fight, Cursed Body disabled Snarl, and then Liquidation straight up melted Lipard. Oh my goodness. It was just, it was incredible to watch happen. Again, that's also probably because I leveled up to 84, but hey, we'll take it, right? This was actually really important because it allowed us to avoid getting tormented, which was going to make the rest of the fight a lot more frustrating, but I had already anticipated on that, so to not get tormented, yeah, definitely big win. Next up, her Pokemon was going to be Scrafty, so again, we've already seen these Pokemon and we know how crazy difficult they can be. So we used a combination of Liquidation and Strength Sap, and then we got to her Toxicroak once again, Cursed Body coming in clutch, taking out that Sucker Punch, and then we one-shot it with Bulldoze. More Pico, same thing, one-shot it with Bulldoze, and then we have to go up against her Gigantamax Grim Snarl. Yeah, this thing is like the monster of all dark types. So we're able to max guard against the Max Snooze initially, which would have one-shotted us, like that actually one-shot us a few times in the past. Um, and then we somehow end up getting the Max Quake on the next turn to go first, and one-shot it. Yeah. That actually happened. That Marnie fight was definitely not easy, guys. Again, arguably one of our tougher fights during this playthrough. Now it was time to fight Hop once again, though. Our final match against Hop, guys. And we sweeped him. We sweeped him so bad. Okay, so now we actually have to chase down a sketchy agent because Oliana is being sus. After playing hide and seek for about 10 minutes, Pierce creates a concert distraction which allows us to get to the Rose Tower. We then proceed to wipe the floor with Oliana's employees. Once we get to the top, though, we see her full craziness unleashed. After losing once, I decide to switch Whirlpool over to Hex, this way I can one-shot her Frostless right in the beginning. And then we wreck her Milotic, Zalazzle, and Serena, without too much trouble. Then she uses her Gigantamax Garbodor. So for this fight, I decided to use Max Guard against the Max Quake, and then send two Max Quakes back at her which was able to get us a victory. After the fight, we see Jeff and Leon having a serious conversation, basically showing that Rose is actually going kind of insane right now in a weird way to protect the future. Chairman Rose is turning into a crazy kind of progressive person. But again, that's not really our problem. Yet. Now it's time for the gym leader portion of the Champion Cup, though, and after Leon's incredibly long speech, we find out that Bede is now the fifth gym leader. But we completely sweep him once again. After Bede, it was time to mop the floor with Nessa. Oh my goodness, I will never forget how much trouble she gave me at that second gym. Thankfully, her Max Darkness did not do as much damage against us. This time, we were able to completely demolish her Dreadnought with Max Quake. After that, we had to go up against Bay. Once again, pretty easy sweep. Now we're at level 88 on Corsola, so... Yeah, Corsola is definitely shaping up to be a pretty awesome Pokemon at this point. A really, really good tank. It's definitely almost at its full potential. Following our battle with Bay, we have a rematch with Ryan, but this time it's single battles instead of the double battle. It was still kind of difficult, though. Torkoal put us to sleep with Solar Beam, which eventually we woke up from. We used Liquidation, knocked it out, but then we had to go up against his Flygon, which again, you guys already know how Flygon is. So we used a combination of Strength Sap plus Liquidation. 
After that, we had to go up against this Turtonator, so we used Bulldoze. Gudra, we focused on Hex, and then we had to go up against this Gigantamax Duraludon, which was basically a fight between Max Quake and Max Depletion. It was a battle to the death, which we won. Now is finally time to fight Lee- oh wait, remember that problem I said that wasn't ours earlier? Well... Yeah, that's kind of a problem now. So now me and Hop have to go fulfill our destiny, so we head back over to the Slumbering Weld and we grab the Rusted Sword and the Rusted Shield. So this was actually a very interesting fight. His S Clavalier we knocked out with Liquidation, his Berserker we knocked out with Bulldoze, his Ferrothorn we knocked out with Hex, Link Clan also knocked out with Hex, and then against his Gigantamax Copper Raja we used Max Geyser, 97 HP left, and we got the kill. So definitely a yeah, pretty easy fight, I'd have to say. Now it's time to really clean up Jeff's mess, though. We had to go up to the roof and stop the big skeletal dragon, since Leon had failed to catch it. After a quick fight with Eternatus in its regular form, we see it Eternamax, and oh my god, that thing is massive. Uh, nothing seems to work, so me and Hop decide to use the sword and the shield to summon Zacian and Zamazenta. After a long fight alongside Zacian and Zamazenta, we eventually take down Eternatus and we catch it with a moon ball. Finally, bringing balance to the force. I mean, I mean Galar region. Three days later, and it's time for our ultimate fight. The battle that decides if this is going to be one of those failed challenges or a successful challenge. And after numerous failed attempts, after switching moves and strategies, we finally figured it out. I was not going to give up, guys. We did not give up during the Milo fight. We did not give up during the Nessa fight. We had made it this far. You had better believe that I was going to stick this through until the end. I knew that there was some way that we could pull it off. So we used a combination of Hex plus Strength Sap on the Aegis Slash to heal from the Shadow Balls. Then we used Icicle Spear on the Dragapult, only getting two hits the first time, but a critical hit on the next turn. Then Rillaboom came out and used Knock Off. 21 HP left, guys. 21 HP left. I really thought this was going to be it. But then Cursed Body comes in and disables it, and we're able to get a Strength Sap all the way back to 215 HP. And then we use Icicle Spear and get 4 hits, so close to that 5 hit sweep, but you know, of course we couldn't get it when it mattered, right? And then of course Leon uses a full restore. If there's anything that champions should know how to do, it's use full restores. Spam full restores. But then we use Icicle Spear again, and you know what happens? We get the 5 hits. So incredible guys, we're able to basically just one shot his Rillaboom. Haxorus was the next Pokemon in line, Cursed Body disables Outrage, and then we use Strength Sap plus Icicle Spear to forehead to death. Insane luck, seriously, we were getting insanely lucky with this fight. After that we had to go up against his Rhyperior, so we used a Liquidation, and then Cursed Body ended up disabling Heat Crash, so again, Cursed Body really coming in clutch right now. Now it was time guys, it was time for his Gigantamax Charizard, the Pokemon that was blocking our gate to success. Can we actually do it though? This is where most people end up failing the challenge. So we Dynamax and we tank the Gigantamax Wildfire and then we two-shot it with Max Geyser. Completing the challenge, completing our solo Galarian Corsola playthrough. So I asked the question once again, can we beat Pokemon Sword and Shield using only Galarian Corsola? The answer is yes, my friends. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please make sure to hit that like button down below, I'd really appreciate it. So much time and effort went into making this video, guys, like, a lot more than I normally put into my videos, but I know that you all want high quality Sword and Shield content, and I'm doing my best to deliver on that. Isle of Armor's coming out real soon, I'm going to be putting out more Sword and Shield content in the coming weeks, so if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well and turn on the bell notification, and I will see you all real soon in the next one.